I remember feeling so jealous that he had like a real body of work. He had like his, he had films that he did when he was this age and a film he did this age and he's the lead and like, you know, like maybe his kids watch this. Mm -hmm. There's a body of work there. I was like, what's my body of work? 2000 Vimeo tapes? Mm. Mm. Yeah, like what are my kids gonna watch? David Gorelick dot Ryan scene one. (laughs) Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. David Gorelick is an actor. He sat down with me on the Upper West Side of Manhattan to talk about the work. Do you have a typical way that you like to begin your preparation process when you get a new role? I think, okay, so first we we read. We read and we start to, sometimes you can start to feel things. I mean, things start to come up naturally. You start to get instincts about certain things. And um, I don't necessarily think about it this way, but my acting teacher, um, Sheila would say that Philip Seymour Hoffman would make a list of ways that he was like the character and ways that he was unlike the character. And the ways that you're like the character, clearly you don't have to work on. The ways that you're not like the character, that's the things that need to be addressed. Like ultimately to me, it's like technique or tools are for when uh, you need them. Yeah. So realistically, I read and and try to start to sense and, and feel um and i also oftentimes find that the more i read it and read it out loud with people the more i can start to feel into it and get a sense of of where stuff lives in me and also what needs to be uh what needs to be addressed i think as well so i don't i don't start to weigh myself down with like personalization or specific choices definitely not as a as a first step I mean, things might come up. Yeah, things might intuitively come up, but uh, I think I like to remove like the pressure of needing to make decisions and just start to read and yeah. sense. Yeah, and and feel. To me, like I think a lot about drives, like what characters want, and sometimes they're really evident and clear, and sometimes they're not. Mm. And my feeling is that um, this is so not the question you asked. This definitely is not how I just start mm-hmm. thinking about it. But I think it's worth um, considering like the humanistic, deep-seated hole in the character's soul mm-hmm. that they're looking to fill. Mm. And I think that is at the core of the drive. Yes. And, and that's, to me, I think, is the through line. Do, does every character have that? I think they have to. I think that a lot of times it's not clear. Yeah. But my feeling is that People sometimes, I mean, I've, I've, we've talked about this before, like we, I've gotten into debates with, with people who I like really respect about like, well, people don't know what they want. People don't, Yeah. not everyone understands their, their drives and goals. And I think that's valid. But the conundrum is that like, if you don't, if you're not consciously aware of what you want, you can be sure that your body is. Your yeah, body's going yeah. for something. If you're not aware of what you're doing, yeah. your body is. Yeah. Like your body, like there's, yeah. Yeah. Me and you right now, like, I'm yeah. talking to you as a friend, but there's also, like, ways, th- things that I need, things that I, ways that I want to be perceived. Right. If you're playing, like, a, like a larger part, it, it, there's no point in the scene being there if you don't end the scene in a different place than where you started. Mm-hmm. It, there's just no point. Mm-hmm. Like, what's, what's the point of telling a story where nothing changes? Yes. So are you saying that if it's not apparent that there is a change that you have to make one only if you want the scene to be interesting because it could be that you are in a badly written script sure but you're saying that you can actually make it better if you do what you just said 100 oh 100% oh yeah absolutely I mean, I also think like it's very clear sometimes when you're serving plot. Mm-hmm. The, the 
the task is to like, how do we make this about the relationship? Mm -hmm. So that we're not just communicating plot points, we're making this about the relationship with the person we're in the scene with. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, dynamic, something has to shift in the relationship in the scene. It's not that it has to. I mean, no, I, I, like, I, I don't think like, uh, I don't think anyone's gonna pull you aside and, and no director on, well, maybe not no director, but I don't think someone's gonna pull you aside and be like, look, the relationship has to change. Like they're concerned about story beats. Yeah. They're concerned about communicating information. Yeah. I'm concerned about like, I mean, look, I'm, I'm trying to build a career. Like yeah. I don't, I don't, I haven't had that many shots. Yeah. Like when I get something, like uh, I want people to go, like, I'm sorry, who's that? Yeah. And I, so uh, maybe someone else can throw away scenes, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> you have to make that yeah. work. Yeah. I just don't I just don't have an I just don't have an overabundance of them. Right, right. And ideally I ideally I always feel that way. But like when I mean look, when I book a job, it's it's not just a job. Yeah. It's like a chance for for to hopefully do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Take me back to why you even wanted to start to do this. When did this start to become a thing that you wanted to take seriously? Um I okay. I, for the longest time, I, I I told the story that I moved to New York when I was 19 because like, I was very unhappy in college. Um, I went to UMass Amherst and I, I just, I had this feeling of like, what the fuck? Like, I, I just felt so much dread at the idea of spending four years in mm -hmm. this like high rise in Western Massachusetts in this dorm building. Mm -hmm. um, and New York felt impossible to me. Like I'm from a, from a, Russian immigrant family. Um, acting is like, a, it's like, it's like banking on winning the lottery, like your career mm -hmm. plans to win the lottery. It was, it never occurred to me as a thing. I never wanted to act. I never thought about acting as a kid. Um, I actually think my parents suggested that I try theater and I was like, no. <laughs> that's a new one your parents yeah kind of pushing you they, were, they weren't that. pushing they weren't pushing but i think they, i think <laughs> they were like, because i like because I, I like doing like accents and i was yeah, i yeah, was yeah. i was shy but i like i i wanted the right kind of attention yeah i didn't just want attention i wanted the right kind of attention mm -hmm. and um yeah when i was at umass halfway through my sophomore year i just decided i'm not coming back mm. so I called my best friend, uh, Jordan, and I was like, I'm moving to New York. And he was like, all right, do it. And I just, I didn't come back. Wow. And I came, to, I didn't go to New York to act. I think I went to New York because it felt impossible. Uh -huh. And I knew that I wanted to try acting, but I also had no idea what acting was at all. Had mm. never acted. Mm. So I didn't know there was, I didn't know there was skill. I didn't know there was technique. I thought acting was like, I don't know, like meeting the right people and mm. like, you know, how to win friends and influencing people. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe in some respects it is, but that's all that I thought it was. Yeah. And when I got to New York, I think what I really had going for me was like, I didn't know this shit was supposed to be hard. Like I, I thought that like the hard part was getting in the rooms. Mm. So in some ways, like my, how naive I was like really helped me because right. I was banging my head on a lot of fucking doors. And when people like, I mean, so I got to New York I sat in a Starbucks in Union Square. I Googled acting classes. I don't know the difference between <laughs> acting classes and improv. I ended up That's in an amazing. improv class at the Magnet. Oh. There was a porn star in my class the first day. I was like, New York is wild. Okay. How'd um, you know it was a porn star? Because she was very open about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, because you're a good boy, so you didn't know. I, to be honest, I thought I actually had a shot with her until she got very, very sexual with me in a scene, and my 19-year-old self could not handle it. <laughs> I wilted <laughs> fully. Yeah, so I was like, well, New York is wild. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I asked the teacher after class, I was like, what should I do? Like, I don't know anything. Yeah. What the, where should I go? What should I do? How do I meet people? How do I, mm -hmm. and he pointed me in the direction of like one of those casting director pay to meets. He yeah. was like, well, you pay money, you meet casting directors. I was like, great, I'm about to be famous. What do you think about that answer now looking back? It's not such a bad answer, right? Well, my feeling now is, uh, my real feeling is that like, look, if you really stand out, yeah. if you're truly elite or some version of elite, and you get in front of agents, you get in front of casting directors. I don't think there's any world where they see someone who's like incredible and they go like, actually, no, this is a pay to meet. Right. 
Yeah. Also, like the reality is that I got my first agent through. I got my first agent through a commercial agent night, mm. and we kind of he an agency called the Henderson Hogan, and um, they were trying to start a commercial division. And I didn't know like commercial agent, theatrical yeah. agent. I didn't know fucking anything. Yeah. So I, I met this guy and he was like, look, I can't bring you on, but I, we can do something called hip pocketing, which basically means like, he'll like a- add me on as an attachment. Like he's not representing me, but every once in a while he like get me an audition. Mm-hmm. And, um, but he also started to like give me advice. Like I would ask him like, what mm-hmm. classes should I take? What this is, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he would just kind of guide me. He would like tell me where to go. Mm-hmm. Like actually he was the one who suggested my kind of the woman who became really my acting teacher, Sheila. Like he's the one who pointed me in her direction. Mm-hmm. And then maybe six months into that kind of uh, mentor type friendship, the other agent at the company was doing a pay to meet. And I was like, look, do you think it's time that maybe I get in front of this guy and do just do a scene? Mm-hmm. And my uh, my friend, Tom, who was the one who I, who I mentioned, like he was like, yeah, I think this is the right time. Mm. And I did the scene and they signed me. Mm. So like to me, it's like, I mean, it's a it's a bummer to make to like have to pay money to meet people. Yeah. But I also think like if you stand out, you stand out. Yeah. Like it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but getting back to your question, like when I started to act and when I started going to those pay meets, it became very clear very quickly that I didn't know how to fucking act. Mm. But like point blank period. Mm-hmm. I went to a class at the Barrow Group. My, I think one of my very first classes I ever took was at the Barrow Group. And I remember the first time I watched an actor do a, or just read lines as like a cold read, yeah. I was blown away. I was like, <laughs> how does she know how to say it? How does she know? How, she's saying the lines like a real person. How does she know? Uh-huh. It was... It was mesmerizing. I could not believe how far ahead yeah. she was. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? You can just scan a text and say lines believably? <laughs> Impossible. Amazing. That's so great. Um, so then when I, when I got to, uh, eventually I ended up at, at Sheila's. And I saw shit in that class that like, uh, I mean, my first class, there were these, there were these girls doing like a, an improv scene from True Blood, mm. the, the HBO show. Mm-hmm. I didn't know people could just cry. <laughs> I didn't like. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. this. Yeah. I didn't know that people could be so invested playing fucking vampires. <laughs> I didn't know that people. Could, I didn't know. Yeah. I was. I to me it was like like a like a mystical experience. I was yeah. like I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. To me, I saw that and I was like, I think this is better than anything I've ever seen on TV. And this is in the church basement. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. What was in you though that wanted to do this? Because if you didn't even know, yeah, like it sounds right, like you right. didn't even have a moment where you were transformed by acting. Not yet. Right? Not yet. Uh, that you were seeing. Not yet. It so didn't come. what was it that really made you want to do it though? It, I think that the, I felt, I think that a large part of me felt unseen. Oh, okay. And I felt like I was going to show, I was going to show them. In a way, this is a good motivator. And then you're laying on top of it that this naivete about everything and it's your eye your eyes are open so you have this drive of wanting yeah to be the bright kind of attention and then not understanding any aspect like so you're able to like well i think a foundation is being able to lay on top on i top think of that it. some of like a person's deepest like or not deepest some of a person's most vain egoic desires yeah in the pursuit of them, they fall away and like a uh, true meaning reveals itself. I think you're right, yeah. So like that, th- that was, I mean, a- acting has transformed my life. I mean, mm-hmm. acting is like, uh, it, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. But that none of that would have happened if I didn't have this like seed of like, exactly. I'm special, please. Exactly. I'm gonna, and I'm going to be acknowledged for it at some point. You have to get up there then, right? Because you're in the class or you just watch Yes, it. yeah, I have to get up there. So talk about that. Like, w- I had this monologue prepared. Uh-huh. And um, first class, you could do a monologue. And she, I thought I did a really good job, prepared really well. And she was like, what is this? I mean, she was, she was tough. I was, um, yeah, she, I mean, she's a, she was a, she's a, she's a powerful, tough teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just became apparent that what I saw people do, I could not do. <laughs> and I remember the feeling was like, uh, my feeling was like, if this person can 
deliver me to that. Like I'm, I, I think I'm ready to, I mean, I, I'm committed. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna, if there's a contract, I'm signing it. Yeah. There, I, I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Also, like I moved to New York. Yeah. I guess this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so, but those first couple of years were like very uncomfortable. Mm. It's like what I was telling you about my class. Like if there's not a reason you're there, it's fucking torture. Yeah. Like, because you can't hide from your own blocks. You can't hide from your own insecurities. Right. You feel insecure about it in life, try doing it on stage. Right. Right. To be scrutinized. Right. And, um, so were you, were, was your ass handed to you in a good way? You know, it sounds like you, you, you were going to get your ass kicked and that might, might be I mean, good. Look, it depends what you call a good way. I mean, I think it was, it must've been a good way. Cause you're an actor. Well, it was, like, it was <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, that, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm incredibly happy how, but good, I mean, good way is a good way for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sh- it yeah. didn't break you is what I mean, I guess. It didn't break it didn't break me, but the the process was about like I mean, I, there were there were like several years, I mean, a couple years where like I was nervous to go to class for mm. sure because I knew I was going to be uh yeah. low level eviscerated. Yeah. I didn't know what else to do. And by that <laughs> and by that point I was I had had na- naively gotten an agent. Like I was mm. theoretically not super frequently but getting some shots. Mhm. And one of my bigger epiphanies, it was, um, it was the winter. I was looking for a new apartment. I must have been like, I think I was probably like 23. I, I'd been in class for maybe three, three, four years, something like that. And some of one of the assistants or two of the assistants couldn't come back. And she, la- she asked me, she was like, can you come on and assist? Do you, are you interested? Do you want to do it? And I remember the feeling of like, this is going to be really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But if you commit to this, if you're assisting two classes a week, something will happen. Mm. And um, that's what I did. And, and did something happen? I mean, it, it, it still took like, I mean, one thing is that I was now kind of responsible for being one of the people who commented on scenes. Mm. So I had to, that was also like a thing. Yeah. Like actually like understanding what's going on in the scene. Right. But if I were to fast forward to like really like when the shift happened, to me, it was like I started to feel like there was a period of like at first I was like, I can't, I, I'm not good. I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to get there. Yeah. I just felt like not, not having the language or the tools or the anything to, to, to arrive at this place that I saw people at. Mm-hmm. And then there came a point when I started to get a little bit, um, I started to develop like a little chip on my shoulder. I started to feel like, well, all of these people in class, like, I'm sorry, but they grew up in artistic families. Mm -hmm. They grew up with an emotional language. Mm -hmm. They grew up like communicating emotionally. Um, I did not. Mm -hmm. I was like a really, um, like a sensitive, fragile kid. And my grandfather was like, this does not work. Mm -hmm. And he stuck me in wrestling. Mm so my whole uh upbringing was about suppressing fear and like shutting down emotion and like i had no my body would would shut down emotion Mm -hmm. whereas a lot i'm sorry like a lot of people that are on class like yeah come on you're not ready yeah yeah, like your parents are artists yeah yeah um so you yeah so you had some digging out to do that other people didn't yeah but but i started to feel like well they do this thing they yeah. can do this thing, but I do, I can do another thing. Yeah. And in the scene, when we when we lock eyes, me and you will both know what's happening. Mm-hmm. And I started to feel like this. Uh, I started to feel like a sense of my. I think my own power, like my own mm. my own trust in myself. Mm-hmm. That like this is not for the teacher. This is not for anybody in class. This mm. is for me and you mm. in the scene. Mm. And we're gonna know what's happening. Mm. And I still. I mean, look. I still think that like. To me, the most exciting part of acting is when you forget that you're acting. Yeah. When you forget that you're acting and they forget that you're acting. And part of my, like, when I teach sometimes also, like, a lot of times I'll go with a new person. And um, part of the reason that I'm doing that is I'm trying to hook them so hard that they can they can relax and, and realize yeah. that we're not acting. Yeah. We're, we're doing this for real. Yeah. Um, look, I remember when I did this... Um, 
I did this Lifetime movie like five years ago, and I had I had some scenes with Tammy Blanchard, mm. and I remember the first time I acted with her, it was like jarring. How it's like a different dimension of reality. Uh -huh. Like this is not pretend. Yeah, yeah. It feels different. Yeah. Um. So I think I mean to me like that's. I don't think it can always happen, but that's to me that's what I'm after. That's like, what you strive for. Look, I I really want the experience. Yeah. This, do you know who Conor McGregor is? Conor McGregor is an MMA fighter. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say that when guy. he was coming up, he was doing things that we all thought were impossible. Mm. He was knocking people out in like seven seconds who've mm -hmm. never been touched. He was calling the shots that were like impossible. And he had this, I would, bro, I would, I would watch Conor McGregor interviews for motivation. <laughs> Gen, I mean, genuinely. I would sit at Whole Foods in Tribeca in the morning and watch Conor McGregor interviews for motivation. Um, maybe I shouldn't admit that. Um, but fuel. he has this quote, he's, and he says, you got to think of yourself some kind of way. Mm. Why not think of yourself as the best to ever do it? It's actually a great quote. You got to think of yourself, you got to have some kind of self-concept. <laughs> might as well be that one. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that something in me shifted. Yeah. Like, so then when the, the, the shift though then mean that you were finding yourself auditioning for more things and getting called back no what was okay. <laughs> that's many more years <laughs> okay. that's okay. many more years okay you're like we're, we're, we're like 40 minutes in the interview <laughs> get to the real shifts <laughs> enough with no, the no, class no. this is interesting this is interesting the shift happens and you are just the shift in acting happens. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you are growing mm -hmm. in this in this class though mm -hmm. because of this. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like you were you were it wasn't represented in jobs yet. No. But there was a growth that was keeping you invested. Well, yeah, I mean this was an environment that was incredibly daunting where now people would come up to me after class. Mm. And I was, and I was the one. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I'm like five, six years in at this point. Mm -hmm. But also, this is like, she was my. I mean, she was my first real teacher. Like, to me, it's like end all, be all. Like, there is no other. There is no other place. Yeah. So this was like, I mean, her that that basement is like my gym, my kingdom. Like the the most meaning for me because yeah. because uh, it it took so long, and yeah. now like, it's it's mine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's my, it's like full freedom. Conor McGregor has another quote. <laughs> he's like, he's, um, early on, a lot of interviewers asked him, like, how, how do you handle pressure so well? Like, you're so loose. You're so relaxed. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? And he said, I swear to God, as I'm walking to the cage, it feels like the chains are coming off and I can finally be free. That's not helpful though, is it? Yeah. To me how? It is. How? How could that be helpful? It's reframing. That's that's how I saw auditioning too. Do you go through the process of seeing the chains? No. So the it's a mindset. It's like you think like we we see acting as like when we act, man, I'm nervous. I got to do a thing. It's yeah. so tight. It's so and when I audition, like I got to remember, yeah. I got to say it like this. Yeah. And I got bro, fighting is life and death. Mm. If a man can be at his freest fighting, I think I can walk into an audition room. <laughs> yeah like it just gives you like a sense of to me it gave me a sense of permission like we're, if we're talking about stakes yeah i'm sorry but an audition is not the same as a fight right, right. but yet i mean why does it and i mean it doesn't feel the same but there's there's a sim similarity to it like for for many years i mean you yeah. asked when i started getting callbacks i started getting callbacks when i started to feel free in audition rooms yes like I started to think about how I wanted them to feel in the audition. Yeah. What I wanted the reader to feel at the end of my lines. What am I? I'm, it wasn't exactly like actioning lines, but like, bro, if if I'm seducing, let's do it for real. Yeah. Like yeah. I want you to. I like still like I want you to. Are we acting or not? Yeah. Yeah. It. If you're threatening the same thing, if you're asking the same thing, like, right. You let's hook on to something real. If you want, if you hook on to something real and you make it real, you forget about, oh, but like it's an, yeah. it's an audition yeah. and like I gotta say it like this yeah. and um like it it just becomes like like people in, in, in sorry to keep referencing my class but like the question often comes up is like I'm trying to get out of my head yeah 
I'm, I, th- what I worked on was getting out of my head. How do you work on getting out of your head? <laughs> you work on getting out of your head by being specific. Yeah. Not by working on be- getting out of your head. Right. What was the breakthrough that just got you more auditions? Not the breakthrough in the class that, got, that made you kind of... Do you know the answer to this? What? Do you know the answer to this question? No. Okay. I did this. Um, Would you think I knew the answer and I was just asking it? Well, sometimes, yeah. Well, we've, well, it's, uh, we, we've talked. Oh, wait. I don't, I don't remember. Well, maybe I haven't told you. Yeah, I don't know. Um, one of the more miraculous things that's ever happened to me was um, I did this when I was with Henderson Hogan. I auditioned for this Vimeo series. I was, I was nervous as hell to do. Mm. And I, I told myself, I was like, if I do this, let's really commit, let's really invest. I'm not sure if it's gonna be good, but I cannot be bad in something that is bad. Yeah. I did this thing. And um, a year later, they screened the first three episodes. And I'm watching it and I'm like, holy shit, it's good. And I'm bad in it. Mm. And I was like, completely like, put that out of my mind. I was like, I can't think about this anymore. About a couple months later, I wake up in the morning from with a, with a Facebook friend request from like a very big manager. Mm. Someone who like, I was also like, I, I knew everyone. Like I knew what yeah. agents were where, like I just knew these things. Yeah. Um, so I knew who this was. Mm-hmm. I was like, interesting. Then I get a message from him and he's like, hey, I saw you in this thing. This is the company that I'm with. If you ever want to talk, I'm happy to help as a fan. I think mm. you're talented. Mm. I was like, oh, this is crazy. But I also had like, uh, who knows what this is? Who knows what the situation is? New York is wild. Yeah. Um, we ended up getting coffee. Nothing but professional. Mm. And they signed me. Mm. Also, and I remember that that taught me the, the point. Like you never know who's watching, and you, and you don't know, know what's good. Watching. Well, you don't know what what's well, good. Well, the fourth. I mean, I don't know about those first three. In the fourth episode, I have some scenes that are like interesting. Mm. I gotta say, and I did some interesting stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember, like, because I've had a lot of. I mean, a lot of since then, before then, a lot of people have passed on me. Mm. I've had a lot of rejections, but I remember that experience taught me that like you never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. Like him uh, signing me from that show to me is like a one in a, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's an impossibility what yeah. happened. So yeah, when I, when I get into low points, I mean, you just never know who's watching. Yeah, right. And people at the top sometimes are watching everything. Were you developing then at this time because of all this training, was it actually preparing you practically for like a set? First off, can I just say that I fell in love with acting watching Peaky Blinders. Before that show, I think I was in cl- I decided to be an actor. I just I made a decision. When I was watching that show, it was the first show where I would rewind scenes to mm. see like actually who's playing what. Mm-hmm. What are we act- what are they playing? Cuz it seems like nothing's happening, but actually everything's happening. Mm-hmm. What's going on? So I started to analyze these things and I think I like I mean I I, I think I stylistically started to I was like that's mm. I like I like that. Yeah. It's interesting to me. Like mm-hmm. not every act, like me and one of my close friends, like we disagree on our favorite actors very vehemently. Like yeah. completely disagree. Yeah. Um, not every style is for everyone, clearly. Yeah. But I think I started to understand what I liked. Mm-hmm. And I I think one of the, probably the gifts that I have is I can, I think if I'm conscious of a person's qualities that I like, I can kind of absorb them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um at the, or at least then that's what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. And in some, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Mm-hmm. The first, the first, I mean, when I was in New York, I started booking maybe once every year and a half, some kind of co-star mm-hmm. in my like mid twenties, but I never got callbacks, never got callbacks. Mm. Um, I moved to LA when I was like 20, Mm. and that's when I started to feel really really confident as an actor um, because of because of class and because of I mean the, the other kind of great thing about a class was that sometimes like 
well-known actors are coming in. Talented, yeah. well-known actors are coming in. So you get, a, you get a workout in with someone that you watch. Yeah. So it yeah. makes you feel like, well, I'm in a scene with them. Yeah. Like, what's, who, they're on TV. Yeah. Why aren't I on TV? Right. Um, Pull your weight with this person. Why can't yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there a way in LA that you were keeping this going, keeping your feet wet in the class? Well, actually, the thing is, in LA, I actually, some of the most important teachers I ever had were in LA. Oh. Yeah, I, I, when I got to LA, I had a meeting with an agency that acted like they were going to sign me and then they passed. Um, but that agent set me up with, I think as a consolation, she set me up with this general with a casting director. And I asked the casting director, I was like, when theater, when English theater actors come to LA, who do they train with? Because in my mind, I was like obsessed with Tom Hardy. I was obsessed mm -hmm. with Michael Fassbender. I was mm -hmm. obsessed with Kelly Murphy. Like, mm -hmm. as I was like, if they were me, where would they go? Yeah. Um, and he pointed me in the direction of this woman, Jeannie Hackett. I had never worked with like real, I mean, we'd work, obviously there was scene study class, but we never focused on text. Mm. Jeannie was gonna direct Long Day's Journey into Night at the Geffen. Mm. She, I think from the jump, she kind of wanted me to understudy. Mm. I think she just saw that I cared and that I was really driven. Yeah. Um, and we started working on Long Day's Journey tonight. And it quickly became completely apparent to me that I had no idea what to do with text whatsoever. Interesting. It was, it became abundantly clear that like. But doesn't everybody hit that with O'Neill? <laughs> Where it's like, whoa. Yeah, but that's how you learn. If you don't, yeah. make, if you don't, if uh, the thing with that part, Edmund is on paper, it looks like he's very passive. Mm. You can't play that. Mm. It doesn't, it's unwatchable. Yeah. How do you make that active? These, this is like how you actually, this is how, you, for me, how do I make, how do I, yeah, what do I do? Right. So I ended up actually understudying that play mm. at the Geffen. Mm -hmm. And um, Alfred Molina played, uh, what the fuck is the dad's name? But what I noticed about him immediately was his vocal variance. Uh, he didn't say, there was no, like, if you, if I'm talking to you and I'm reading a page, I, it could be the most compelling information ever. If I'm just talking like this, after about a minute, you're going to fall asleep. Yeah. But he had pages and pages. His vocal yeah. variance was so clear. The specificity was so clear. He was high, he was low, he was fast, yeah. he was slow. It was everything. Yeah. You never got tired of listening to him. Yeah. And I was like, this is a... I was, trying to, I was trying to approach this like... Back then, I was trying to approach this like Kobe Bryant. How does he think about it differently? Mm -hmm. um, and that became clear to me. I started studying with this voice teacher named Rowena Balos. And um, she really became my text analysis teacher. Mm. She taught me so much. Mm. She taught me so much. It's like, it's like, I'm sorry, can I just say? Absolutely. I just said, she taught me so much. She taught me so much. Imagine yeah. this was a play. She yeah. taught me so much. She taught me so much. Rowena taught me that. I say, she taught me so much. But the second she taught me so much is a completely different thought. And I saw, I saw the differences in what you were just saying. You know yes, what I mean? When you said of it. Of course. So that's And the second thought only happens because of the first thought. Yes. But we love going, she taught me so much, she taught me so much. <laughs> but human beings have an idea, have a thought, and then they breathe and a second thought comes to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't know that I didn't I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I, believe, I just believed in myself. Like, I really believed in myself. I mm. thought that if I got up on stage, I, want, I wanted to get up on stage so badly. Mm. There was uh, the guy that I was uh, understudying. His name was Colin Waddell. The guy on the street is, he was amazing. Genuinely amazing uh, in the part. Mm. But I, I, one time I literally came up to him and I was like, bro, like, please. Can you give me one? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, wait, really? Like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that's amazing he, he, that he didn't give me any attitude he was just like I don't know what you want me to say I just like but literally I literally I literally that's asked amazing. them amazing yeah I remember it was a but that was that was a hard time in, in life I had this Alexander teacher and he one time he he asked like he asked me about like how auditions were going or something and I just started crying mm. because I felt like I was working so hard. Yeah. And I was so committed to this. Yeah. And I felt like nobody knew. Yeah. And the 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 pressure the pressure built up, like, because people around me, people in class, like I was the guy. But if I was the guy, 
how come nobody gave a fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that it's almost worse than not being a yeah, guy. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. The pressure the pressure was intense. Yeah. Um, wow. But it got me to the point where like I was I was ready to have some like really honest conversations. Mm. And I need I needed that. Mhm. Um mm-hmm. and that was like a like a kind of a real turning point. Mm. And and it let's just say that guy did give you one, right? He's like, "You know what? I'm going to call him sick." Yeah. Would you have been ready? Yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, 100%. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I was on a different like the other to me like the other under, understudies it was like we're understudies like to me it was like, "Bro, if I I approach this in like a the way that I saw it was like, so I wrestled my whole life, right? Mm. In wrestling, everybody goes, like the top guys, everybody goes to like off-season camps. Everybody go- does all this shit. Everybody goes to all these tournaments. And guys are like mean and aggressive and strong. And at the top, it's like, they're all kind of at the same level. Yeah. And yet, there's a couple guys that mop them. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. To me, it means that they're thinking about it differently. Yes. There must be something that they're doing differently right. for that to exist. Right. So I always thought like, how do I do this differently? Yeah. And um, yeah. back then I was really dedicated to that. Yeah. And I just felt like, man, like if, if you give me a shot, like you're not gonna be able to fucking get rid of me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, so yeah. So what changed? Mean, what changed? What changed? Well, you wanna be really honest? Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, well, look, the next chapter is I got really situated with a great manager at the company. I got an agent. I started auditioning a lot. Mm. I started to get pinned for stuff, but mm. I wasn't booking. Mm-hmm. It had been like a couple, almost two. I Like I got I got this movie Waves. My part got cut down. I thought I was going to do something. It really kind of didn't. Mm. Um, but I started to, because of the representation, I started to audition a lot more, but I wasn't booking. Mm-hmm. And then the pandemic happened. Mm-hmm. And then um, I started to feel really like, started to get this feeling of who am I doing this for? And I'm waiting to be selected by who? Right. Like, you're, like your whole life is about being selected. Mm-hmm. Your whole life is like, I'll do anything to get the part. Really? I start, maybe because of where I was in life, my age, and also other variables, um, it started to feel like I cannot sell my... Uh, everything in me w- waiting mm-hmm. and hoping and also the idea was like I mean there's I mean, there's a lot of stuff I just don't agree with like part of the reason I love the pod with Ryan is part of that is like I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want so that anybody who needs someone who plays by the books and doesn't say the wrong thing like I'm not your guy yeah you should know like listen yeah. to the podcast you should know yeah so I started to feel like who are, who are the people whose approval I need and what am I willing to do for it? Mm. And I start to feel like if that's the game, I, I don't want to play anymore. Mm. And I started to entertain the fact that like, maybe this shit's not, I'm not doing this shit anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's probably a good place to be. Yeah, yeah, right? it was. <laughs> and um, I mean, the real turning point, if you're asking the question of when did I start booking, I started booking three years ago and I started booking i think largely because of this man jj perez Mm. and uh the way this happened was i was i think helping my friend juliet with something and i juliet was sheila's assistant my very first acting class i've known her for like more than a decade Mm -hmm. she's an amazing actor and um she was like i just started taking class with this guy he's different and i was like i've never heard her like that's like high praise Mm. And she was like, he's really teaching audition di- auditioning different. And I started taking class with him. And like, you know, like when you hear truth, it's the truth. Yeah. Um, and I started to, I was like, I need to absorb this man's technique. Like I need to understand. I started to get privates with him for stuff that I knew I wasn't even right for. Just so I could have more access to like mm-hmm. understand how he thinks mm-hmm. about these things. Um, and the, the results, to be honest, like the, in, like I started to, ha- ca- casting directors became fans, like, quickly mm. i didn't have that before Interesting. i always was very jealous about like i oh i always go in for this i've been in eight times for this like really i haven't been in eight times for fucking anything mm-hmm. um 
Yeah, like it's, I mean. The, so then they kept calling you back in for things. Yeah, and I could just like pin, like pin started happening regularly. And also mm -hmm. I started, I started booking. Mm -hmm. I started booking. And then I went to Mexico for, uh, I got really tired of New York, man. I got tired of everybody mm. in this fucking city. Mm. Um, mm. I, I, you want me to talk about this? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I went through it. I really went through a thing. And um, what was the problem? I just felt like an outsider and a lot of issues back to back to back to back. Mm. And a lot of people that were close to me um, mm. weren't there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, also like everything was on tape. And I was like, I don't need to be here. Yeah. Um, so what did that time away give you? I, took, I called my manager and said, I don't want to do this anymore. Wow. I said, if, if they don't ask for me specifically. <laughs> I want offers only. Nah, but like if the, if, some, <laughs> if the cast director's like, yo, I we really like David. He's really right. Yeah. Can you please do it? Then of course. Yeah. But like, don't send me, like, I'm not doing this fucking like guest star. I'm like, my career is not going to be made this way. Mm. I'm not, I don't want to play this game. Mm. And my manager was like, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. But at, nothing dried up. Wow. It was so strange. So, so you were doing what you needed for yourself, both getting away and then also making a demand about the way you were approaching the idea of yourself as a commodity. I was trying to understand what game I wanted to play. Yeah. I was trying to understand what my version of the game was. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to define the rules for myself so I understood if I was winning or losing. Right. Because it felt like I would get stuff and it would feel like I lost. Interesting. See, to me, this is really healthy, it sounds. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, I was pushed to a, I, I guess I was, I was ready to, that's when I started working with JJ. He was like, look, if you just trust me, I was like, dog, you don't need to give me the spiel. No, I don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me. <laughs> there's no cast, there's no, no cast director knows me at this point. Yeah. Like, there's nobody that, like, I have to do it this way. This just doesn't exist to me. Yeah. I'm ready for anything. Mm -hmm. Give me the wildest shit. Like, I'll I'll do it just to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to, just to, yeah. I was like, I'm going to, mm. I'm going to stand and see. So, you're saying it didn't dry up, but were you getting fulfillment in the stuff that you were doing? I wasn't working. Like, the thing is, I I, I wasn't, like, I mean, look. If, if I'm to be totally honest, this is what the past three years have looked like for me. During the pandemic, I got the ABC showcase, which is like, I don't know if you know this, but like as a straight white man, um, it's not, it's, uh, it's fucking very hard for anyone, but as a straight white male, it's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Mm -hmm. um, so that was another thing, like my manager, like, how, dude, if I got this, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I had, this is like a one in a bazillion chance. So, but it felt like my pandemic was kind of filled. It wasn't exactly a job, but it was a something that had some kind of uh, steam behind it. Mm -hmm. Then I got, I think I got the blacklist I booked while I was in Portugal. I did a tape in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I'm, bro, I'm not living in fucking New York. For what? So I can make tapes? Um, <laughs> then I got, I got close on some stuff. Then I got two episodes of FBI. Then I got, oh, the past year, I would say, I started getting parts that I was like, this is what I want to do. This past spring, I did like this West Virginia coal mining movie. Mm. It was like, I mean, you got to realize like, I love, like, I love Sam Shepard. I love, yeah. I love Shanley. Yeah. The fear in when you're, when you're a guy like me in your twenties, the fear is like, are you always going to be a boy? Will mm. anybody ever see you as a man? Well, in the West Virginia movie, like, I, I mean, well, yeah. Mm. So that was the first thing that I was like, okay, I'm, I'm playing the thing that I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And then I did this play at WP, mm -hmm. a two-hander at WP. And to me, the, I mean, WP, I hold it like very high regard. Yeah. And getting that play to me was like, well, holy fuck. Like I wanted to do New York theater my whole life. Mm -hmm. To me, that's like, that's, that's acting. Mm -hmm. Like that's where you prove yourself. Mm -hmm. um, when I got that play, I was like, man, I think like, I think it's starting to happen. Mm -hmm. How was your... The person you're playing opposite in that. Malika Samuel. She's amazing. She's amazing. An amazing actor, an amazing collaborator, and just 
I mean, this is my first real play. Mm. Malika's been uh, doing theater her whole life. Mm. Everybody, like, I know everybody was a little bit nervous about me. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that they cast me is like... Were you nervous? Hell no. <laughs> nah, because I, I, I know... <laughs> this that's what's up. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> That's I mean, I was that. nervous to walk on stage. Of course, I was nervous to walk on I know, stage. I'm not even talking about that. But I wasn't that. like, I wasn't like, can I do this? No. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, the thing is, I like, I, I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. But is Malika was like, stage right, stage left. The director was like, stage right. And Malika would like nudge me with her elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So when you auditioned for Criminal Minds, did you know it was going to be a multi-episode thing? Mm -hmm. You knew it. Mm hmm uh were you had you already auditioned for criminal minds before no. no did they did they know about you though no wow so i don't think anyone knows about me no but you know what i mean like you were saying like people were pinning you and stuff yeah, that's what i mean is that criminal minds is a fully la show ah uh. um that i i lied i said that i lived in la okay i did it at, i yeah <laughs> i'd be fraudulent your boy be fraudulent. That's what you got to do. So what was the secret of landing that? Just having the sauce. No. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I think that I, I mean, I have started to get like, it feels like if it's like a bad guy part. Yeah. Or white trash part. <laughs> I, I get a callback right book. How many were these? before you were, were paired with Liana? I had an uh, initial audition. The cast director is April Webster, I think. She was really lovely to me. We talked about Jeannie, my teacher in LA. Um, she's a theater, a theater lady. Well, she read with me, she gave me a great read, but also like, I mean, I do very well in physical audition scenes because I think about them physically in a way that I think not everybody is trained to. Uh -huh. So when I get a physical complex, a physically complex scene, I go like, this works in my benefit. Well, a lot of people, especially on tape, don't know what to do with physical. Of, yeah, of course scenes. not. Of course not. And it people becomes, say it doesn't matter. Right. It, well, it, the thing is, it doesn't. You don't have to do what the audition says, but you use your body to tell the story. Yeah. Tell it how you want, but we have to be specific. Do you get wide in your shot? Wide. What does that mean? <laughs> on your self tape. Nah, this wasn't a self tape. It was an audition. <laughs> And also, I've been having, I've been, I've been getting auditions, and I do them at my kitchen table. I wanted to feel like I don't need to. They shouldn't feel like, oh, this actor has great lighting and he's really prepared. I've he's got a glorious said this. backdrop. I'm like, dude, I'm at my kitchen table. He has a laptop. We're here in my kitchen. I'm leaning against the wall. That says so much too. It says yeah. like this guy does not need this actually. In a way, you know what I mean, and that's good. It's, he's like putting fake. it in. He's well, fitting it in. We, but we fake it. We fake it for to feel that. That's way. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you you're 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 placing this kind of uh, uh, idea out there that like I'm not gonna put my back job. I got other stuff to do here. Yeah. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, but it's also the ability like you tell the story while using what's around you. I mean, look, yeah. you start leaning on the wall, but you don't stay there, and it tells a story. Yeah, and then you lean back. Yeah, and then you put your hand like this. It's life. And then life. you lean forward. <laughs> It's life. So you're showing them that you can work specifically given yeah. like you didn't set anything up. You didn't prepare for this. Yeah. I'm on my kitchen table. The wall just happened to be there. Right. And let me tell you what I was seeing in these episodes as somebody who is not necessarily a Criminal Minds fanatic. Bro, you're a Criminal Minds fanatic. <laughs> you're not going to <laughs> You're a Criminal Minds fanatic. You're an unsolved. What I was noticing... <laughs> What I was noticing is that, and now you got to tell me how this, how you were able to do this. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm biased, but it really feels like you were able to do subtle, nuanced work when everybody else wasn't. I don't know why. Liana. And, or, and Liana. Yeah. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. But why? <laughs> how did you, it's not just the role. And because you, 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 if you see, and I have seen other bad guys portrayed on this thing, yeah. they weren't able to do subtlety like this. Maybe they didn't want to. Well, but 
it, I, I, I would have believed that they were pushed toward uh, bringing it up. I don't think the, I'm going to be honest. I don't, I think the show moves too fast for this kind of direction. That's interesting. So like, they were just like, if you're, if you're doing it, they're just like, oh wow, he's doing that. Let's move on. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. So you were the able only, to- The only episode that I got like, this episode 1708. Yeah. Like, Zach Guilford directed it. Okay. And it was like, I mean, it's like a performance heavy episode. It sure is. He called, I mean, he, he called me and he was like, it was, it was his first thing that he directed. He was like, look, let's talk about it. When we show up, you know, TV moves fast. Let's talk through everything. No surprises. Yeah. I'm always here if you want to talk through anything. Oh, that's cool. Like he made it performance based. Like that scene with Felicity Huffman. That, that's like, it's that a, was that, a play. That felt like it took four days to shoot. It didn't. But that was, I mean, true. I mean, truly, like steady cam, following, like everything. Yeah. Many, like many, many takes. That 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 episode to me felt very different than the other ones. Yeah. And so, well, let's talk about that scene in particular because first of all, anytime I see anyone holding a gun to anyone's head since Rust, I always think this is different now, right? Yeah. Were you thinking of that? Like you have to hold the gun to her head all day. Yeah, one thing, man. Not look, not all day, but <laughs> that, that didn't take all day. I gotta say, Felicity was like, um, she's an actor. Like she's yeah. a she's a let's get in the, let's get in the trenches and do it. Yeah. There was a there was a t- I mean there were a, there was a couple of takes where like. Bro, I lost my head in those, in those, uh, mm. not like in a real, like, not like any kind of like, really like, I'm going to do anything. Now. Not like that, but like, you know, like you kind of start to hyperventilate. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of things are flowing through you. Mm-hmm. Like your eyes start to get watery. Like there was yeah. a scene where like, like drag, like gun, like drag, like on, like on her. I was like, <laughs> I, she was some totally, of she was in totally there. like, she was totally in it. <laughs> That's amazing. She was totally in it. Yeah, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed working with her. So, you have to. Your character goes through an event during the scene, an emotional event. Yeah, it felt like you were in command of your character, and it didn't. It didn't feel like what I. It's going to sound judgmental. What I sometimes see on network shows like this, where it's like. You don't get to see kind of a living <laughs> character a lot on these shows. It yeah. felt like you were like you I, you had the time to present that to us. That's why it was sh- a little shocking to me. Yep. And you were able to do it. And I, I was I felt like wow, this is really great that he's able to show this in a show like this. Yeah. I mean that that episode to me was like honestly that episode to me was like one of the most fulfilling experiences that I've probably ever had working. Yeah. I mean, gen- I mean genuinely, like I got to do stuff I've, I've never gotten to do. Yeah. Um. I, I, yeah. I mean, it was like we have talked about. Like I, like I love acting, but like what I love about acting is the experience. Yeah. Like there's only so many phone conversations looking off into space that I can yeah. take. <laughs> Um, yeah, but like that episode was like it's me and Liana, it's yeah. me and Felicity. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's an experience. Yeah, and if yeah, so it, it, yeah, I was. Um, and then, and well, no, but, but what I mean is like, I guess I would be kind of suspicious going in if if I was going to be able to totally be in control of this because of the mechanisms of television you know what i mean like you're saying it was like a play it felt like that and like you don't i don't normally see that on television like this yeah dude thinking back man i'm so grateful they gave me that like i remember when i got the call from um from the showrunner and i was like bro they're killing me off I know this phone call is about me dying. The vo- she left me a voicemail. She's like, hey, call me when you can. I'm like, all right, I'm fucking dead. Yeah. And she's like, hey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but she was like, but we we, we wrote you, like you get to do so much in this episode. And um, 
So you didn't even know going in that you were nah, going to die. Oh. They didn't. They don't know. That's oh, really? Into, oh, you know what I what I should <laughs> mention? <laughs> That's funny. I worked with, um, because I mean, between us, like, I my feeling was that they were developing Liana's character, and um, oh. were ma- were making me like that, like on paper, he's the bad guy. He's yeah. a manipulator. He, I was like, I'm not playing this. Mm. I'm not doing this. And how do we not do it? We do it in between lines. Wow. And we do it with behavior in between the lines. You did it. And you did that. I actually yes. was thinking the whole time, there are people watching this that love you. I, I hope so. <laughs> as a char- meaning as a character and don't see this as a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, how did they let him do this? Um, dude, so, okay. So, uh, but when I got that episode, I was shocked that every seed that me and JJ planted through behavior mm. appeared in that episode. Wow. I was like, and I even learned, so I did a, in my class, I had uh, everyone improv a scenario from this, from uh, Criminal Minds. Uh-huh. And one of my students, Jamie, did an, an improv based on this and she blew my fucking mind. And she said what her... Um, her objective was, like I've been very objective, I'm not objective focused, but I think an objective is really important, especially for something like that. Yeah. And the objective that she said, I was like, well, I'm taking that. Mm. I'm 100% taking that. Mm-hmm. That's that's the through line. That's the through line for me. Mm. Because if that's not the through line, then what am I, just a fucking killer? Right, what was it, can you say? Yeah, it was about prote- protecting her and making sure this never happens to anyone like us again. Yeah, yeah. But really about protecting her. Yeah, um, that's why. That's why when she says something at one point, and you say, "I forget what it is," and you say something to assure her, it's really real. Like you don't even, you don't even have this moment where you're like, "This guy's manipulating her" or anything. And I think that that's it, that's great because. You know, you know the there's an impending doom over it, because just you know what the what the, what story we're in. Yeah, and so to play it like that in that was so interesting, and to, it 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 to be not have this muscle twirling shit, it, like no hint of it. Yeah, that's huge, man. Yeah, you know but, that's amazing. That you but were able it, to do if that. I can say also, like Liana is so. Uh, like my feeling was that like we were going to be in our in our own genre of. It's just like the kind of actor she is. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Yeah, baby, that's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. So, we can spend an entire episode talking about your class and your teaching, but I want to talk about it in one specific way. Okay. Mm-hmm. What does the class? You teaching the class actually do for you when you're working as an actor. It reminds me of what I would say to people. It remind it's so interesting. Right now, I find myself I used to daydream about my own acting. And then when I started teaching, that started to go away and I started to daydream about what I could say, like what points to make. Mm. And now I started daydreaming about working through specific people's problems. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm fascinated with blocks in the body, points of tension in the body Mm. that keep an emotion from being fully expressed. Mm. The conversation kind of that we had, like I'm fascinated by staying fully open fully relaxed deeply feeling in moments where normally speaking we would shut down yeah and so i think about like when things come up how do we breathe through it how do we stay conscious and how do Mm -hmm. we release the block in our body so it's no longer a thing now i have these i have these blocks i feel them all the time Mm -hmm. why what i feel the feeling from my gut comes up my throat and it gets caught in my throat and then i start thinking Mm -hmm. and then the feeling dissipates Mm -hmm. the the block 
you become aware of the block and then your mind becomes active and then the feeling dissipates. But I want to experience the feeling fully. And so the notes that what I'm excited to tell a specific person is also very often the thing that I need to tell myself. Mm. And it also, I mean, it's, <clears throat> I mean, there was a period of time when like I, when I started teaching, it was such a relief to, um, to feel it. Cause acting, I mean, like I told you, acting came hard for me. Acting came really hard. Mm -hmm. And because it came hard, like I thought and I, and I, and I, I sought out so many different things and I became so fascinated and like, I mean, I really invested myself in acting for a decade. And somehow, um, I invested so hard that I feel like when I teach, I'm kind of free. Mm. Like, I don't have, like, my, I remember the first class I taught, I like, I was so nervous to give the, 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 the scenario. But then when the class started, where well, I was so free, like, no thought, no worries, I, mm. I, it just started to come. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple months, it started to dissipate. And I started to feel, I started to, be like, why? I, I started to think like, why? I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just good, mm. <laughs> you know? And then class didn't start to feel not so good. Mm. And I started to be like, what's happening? And it was because like, got to constantly reinvent and constantly uh -huh. be engaged to know what you're bringing to class. Uh -huh. Like now, like I have a folk, like I, I, there's something, like usually I, I say something at the beginning of class, something that I'm thinking about, something that I'm focusing on, an intention that I'm setting for the class. Mm -hmm. So, man, I think I've, I'm, I'm very good at starting to answer your question, going somewhere completely different and then not answering at all. It's, it's I, all I valuable though. I auditioned with Liana, three auditions in. <laughs> the answer to our question is three auditions in. Um, <laughs> we never got that answer, did no, we? No, <laughs> no, we didn't. And Joe Montaigne directed that episode and the audition was crazy. Um, so, and it's also, I gotta say this also, there was a point, like at first, it was a new technique, a new way of working. A lot mm. of people had never had like, so the way that it works is I give like basically this detailed scenario and the job of the class is how do you um, either personalize or how, how do you, how do you uh, play the given circumstances? Mm -hmm. How can you have an experience with all this fucking information? Mm -hmm. And um, at first people didn't know how to prep, didn't have a real prep. Mm -hmm. And then people started to develop a prep. And then people, and like at this point, I got to say the level in the class is high. Mm. There's people who do stuff all the time that I'm like, um, I don't know that I could do that. Mm. Fully don't know that I could do that. Mm. And then a part of me, like, I'm not going to lie. There's, there's like, there's some insecurity that comes up. Like, what, what do you mean? Your students can do things you can't do. <laughs> That's amazing. But the thing is, I mean, we're built different. We're yeah. different actors. Realistically, yeah. some of the things like we're, we're just different. Yeah. We have a different essence, a different texture. Like. Isn't that a great thing to think yeah. about for every for every aspect of this? Like when you don't get the role, hey, they have a different text. Those people have a different texture. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe I don't have that texture, or maybe I wasn't showing that texture, or maybe they just goofed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, now you're sitting with me today, and people are watching your big scene. <laughs> in criminal minds all over America <laughs> right now. Uh huh. And you're saying it's one of the most fulfilling experiences on a job that you've ever had. So you go home tonight, you start hearing from people that want to put you in things. Tell us how you approach that now. Dude, I hope this hypothetical gets realized. First off, well, of course. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> but I'm, I, I want to. The question I'm asking is, what we heard in this episode is that you kind of weren't liking the game. Yeah. You kind of changed it in a way, and you you were winning the game. Now, this may be a new level of winning. How are you going to deal with that? Um, I'm not going to. That's a good way. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really into, I mean, I go through fa phases of life of different parts of importance. And right now I'm, uh, bro, I just walk around slowly without my phone and try to feel deeply into presence. 
um, and I think this is so not your question at all, but <laughs> I think that like I've been thinking of depth as like a dimension, mm. and um, in that dimension, you have access to everything. And so I've, I've been trying to focus on feeling into that dimension. But that dimension it has nothing to do with thoughts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's about f- feeling and depth and sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's ideally that's all. So you're saying this doesn't have anything to do with the answer to the question, but it does. You're, you're trying to go deeper in your life. Deeper into into present, like deeper into feeling, deeper into presence, deeper into like like there's things that I want, but yeah. like yeah, um, what's gonna happen with that's gonna happen with that, and I'm interested to see it and experience it. Yeah. Um, I I would like to approach the things that I want without this like cling clinging uh, tension. I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie. Of course, I, what I hope, I mean, what I hoped intended with Criminal Minds to happen was like, I mean, look, I want to work man i'm in my uh i'm not a boy anymore Mm -hmm. but i need i need to work yeah um yeah i'm yeah like i yeah it is what it is like i want to go from thing to thing yeah i want to teach and i want to go from thing to thing Mm -hmm. that's um so i don't i don't know it's interesting too it's very hard for me to gauge like who sees it who doesn't see it yeah if anybody's seen it right i don't know who has paramount plus bro i don't know what what that is But don't you think that? Pe- Are you gonna leave that in? Yeah, you can. definitely. Right. Okay. <laughs> don't you think that people who are looking for people see this stuff? Who is looking for people? I mean, casting directors. I don't, dude. I don't. That's the thing. I don't know. I, I don't know either. Don't know. Like, I would have never expected my manager to have watched that thing. I, I actually don't know. But I will say this: at this juncture, um, I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna keep showing up, like. What I cared about, I remember I, when I did Waves, Calvin's a friend of mine. He kind of got me that movie. And um, I remember feeling so jealous that he had like a real body of work. He had like his, he had films that he did when he was this age and a film he mm-hmm. did this age. And he's the lead. And like, you know, like maybe his kids watch this. Mm-hmm. There's a body of work there. I was like, what's my body of work? 2000 Vimeo tapes? Mm. Mm. Yeah, like what are my kids gonna watch? Right. David Gorelick dot Ryan C one. <laughs> Why does it have to be funny? That was a good poignant moment. Nah, because it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. But what I get what you're saying here. But, but I feel like but I'm just saying that I feel like I'm starting to have a body of work. Yeah. Even this, like this podcast is a is a time capsule yes my intention like there were a lot of things like as i'm coming over like i want to talk about this i want to talk about this i want to talk about this but like yeah. none of it's real yeah it's like we're gonna see i really i'm curious to see what comes out yeah and it'll be a time capsule yes of this time in my life yes because something interesting happened yesterday and i remember specifically and now i'm here yes. and i remember like the first time i listened to your podcast like uh you know, it's it's surreal that a year and a half later I get to do this with you. Yeah. Like I remember when I invited you to to the WP show. Yeah, I was to me you were like I was like yo, it would be so fucking cool if Peter, the host of Back to One, <laughs> comes to my play. I can't believe I know him. Like we've exchanged some DMs and I actually know him well enough to even ask. Yeah. So, so it's cool. crazy that I can have this conversation and feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want you to come back on, and I want you to. Talk about how you've changed in this work, mm-hmm. and yeah. and how you're approaching it differently. Then, yeah. David Gorelick, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love this. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of The Gotham. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.